Ladies and gentlemen, Armand Gunn here tonight with a wall full of guns. We're going to go through, we're going to touch on all of them throughout the video tonight, but we're going to focus on this beauty up here. This is the Type 81 and it's the LMG model, which is super cool, guys. This is the RPK version of the Chinese AK-47 derivative. It's not exactly an AK-47. There are some subtle differences and some of them are pretty cool, such as the fact that it has a last round bolt hold open. There is no long stroke piston in there either, which is the traditional operating system of basically all the other AK-47s with the true pattern AK-47s. This one makes use of a short stroke. So we're gonna get into that. It also has a super cool and pretty effective adjustable gas block. So we'll, uh, we'll touch on that thing as well. And I got a few buddies over here to uh, compare and contrast to help with the video. They're again, AK pattern type guns. We got an RPK here. It's not a, exactly an RPK because the Finns made it and you know, they had to uh, obviously one up the Russians. So there's a couple of unique things here. Um, actually what's, what's interesting about the Valmets is the Valmet M78. Again, the RPK style Valmet. And some of the upgrades the Finns did later went on to inspire the Israelis with their Galil. But this is, however, still more true to the traditional AK-47 pattern. There is no last round bolt hold open. There's a long stroke piston system in there. And you've got your traditional safety selector. Down from there, we have the Czech. The Czechoslovakian VZ-58. Again, basically when there was Soviets and they were running around with their AK-47s, Czechs were pretty much just like, yo, we got this. They had their VZ-58. It's a milled gun, milled receiver, quite lightweight, really pointable. Also features a last round bolt hold open and a short stroke piston system again as well. So it honestly has more in common with the Type 81 than it does the AK-47, kind of neat stuff. But that's enough about that. This is after all the overview video on the Type 81. This is actually gun of the week number 54 for the channel here. And when we do a gun of the week, we do at least three videos on it. We do a shooting video, point of view shooting actually, which is pretty cool, kind of video game style FPS. Get behind the gun, we do the shooting and controls. So I've already done that. That video is two back or I'll uh, link it right up here. If you guys wanna see me shoot the gun, again, uh, playing around with that gas position system, that was pretty cool. But that was video one, I demonstrated the controls. Video two was a full field strip slash disassembly video. So you guys can see that kind of just as a standalone video. And then video three, I'm not gonna have forgotten weapons the hell out of this thing but I'm basically giving to give you guys the gun 101 on this thing. We'll cover the features and specs. I'll give you a brief overview of the controls again, give you guys a little background on the gun, and then I'll take you inside as well so I can actually show you the differences between uh, internally between it and the standard AK-47. And then I'll finish off with a quick run around the wall, just uh, showing you all the cool guns we got kicking around here. Actually, that's gun of the week number 55 right here. That's gonna be next week's full feature firearm, the MG-34, a fantastically awesome incredibly well machined interwar general purpose machine gun from Germany, basically made in the mid thirties. Got some cool stuff in the corner there as well. And uh, there's always some fun stuff kicking around, but we'll get to all of that in good time. So let's kick things off. We'll go butt to tip because Garantham does it the other way and I can't be ripping off Mr. Mike. At least not any more than I have to to give you guys a cool video here. So starting at the back, we do have this rather nice club foot stock, it's nicely profiled here to get your support hand in and tug this thing nice tight to your shoulder for that heavy suppression fire. On that note, it's kind of a nice, almost beechwood finish uh, throughout all the furniture, which is kind of like the nicer stuff you'll see on the VZ-58s. The beaver barf, which is the other kind of, well, is the name known for the other typical VZ-58 stuff, looks kind of gross. It's kind of like a resin mixture of a bunch of like glue and wood chips. But the Type 81 does it nice. At least this is the way they traditionally did it. They had wood stock furniture, nicely stained wood, and blued receivers. Now this receiver, I do believe, is their phosphate. The current production guns do like black painted wood and the phosphate. So it's kind of cool. It's a little bit of a melding of the two worlds there. Back in the butt, we've actually got some junk in the trunk. Uh, I don't know where we're going with these. Um, you can fold this little thing back here and there's a little cleaning kit down there. And uh, apparently nothing in the top part. That's pretty cool, handy there, ready to go. Let's uh, drop this bolt. By the way, guys, the magazines, not quite the same as AK-47s, but they can be, well, at least AK-47 mags can be readily modified to fit inside the Type 81, though they will not carry forward the last round bolt hold one feature. Actually, while I got this gun in my hands, they also make drums uh, specific for the Type 81. This thing is pretty cool. Let me pop up the camera here so you guys can get the full, full view. So that's just gonna pop right in there. And then again, guys, as most drums are, 
they don't uh, they don't actually have any provision for that last round bolt hold open, as they're basically a single stack feed. Well, I got the gun up here. Let's do a trigger pull. So again, TM Grantham, just to make sure I'm uh, referencing <laughs> this segment. We've got a bit of initial take up. It's a little gritty. It's not exactly a fully smooth pull. And then you start pulling into this kind of mushy section. And then it just kind of breaks. So not a particularly nice trigger, but uh, the reset is nice. It's tactile and audible. And uh, somehow it doesn't feel quite as bad the second time. But uh, we'll pop that uh, magazine back in. The magazine, by the way, makes use of a traditional paddle mag release. It's got that rock and lock, just like an AK. So it's, uh, it's a lot of similarities here, guys. Basically, the Chinese did this because they already had some AKs from the Russians, but then didn't actually have the Russian technical package, so they had to kind of recreate it themselves. And that's where they took the liberties of doing a few things their own way. Jump back in here, and again, that trigger pull, I think, is somewhere around six and a half pounds. Now, the grip panel here, you can see it's a, it's a wood grip. It's pretty unique to the Type 81, this pattern. It does, however, have this little metal cap on the top there, which is very reminiscent of the VZ-58s. Those also have this little metal cap, and it's not super comfortable as you can dig into your uh, the web of your hand there under firing if you're really riding up on it. It's different from the traditional AK-47 that has a polymer right up to, or wood, right up to the receiver. It's also interesting how the magazine is spaced forward a little bit further from the trigger group. And you can see in traditional AK, it's tucked up a lot closer. I'm not sure if that's kind of reminiscent of the SKS receiver. It could be something to do with that. And there's a question for Ian McCullum. Forward from that, we got a charging handle. It's a little bit different. And uh, this gun, by the way, 2020 production. We're going to talk about that in just a bit here. And again, you'll note the last round bolt hold open is really nice. There's, uh, you can see the end of the piston right in there. We'll get into that in a second, though. Forward of that, we have this little carry handle, which is uh, actually quite nice. It kind of clicks in place down there. It doesn't uh, move around. Clicks in place up here. Again, doesn't move around. So that's, that's pretty all right. Then we have this rear sight drum. Well, it's not a drum. It's kind of a peep and notch system, which is actually kind of interesting. I'm going to take a moment to show you guys here how this works. There's a notch on the bottom, a notch on the top, and this open kind of aperture in the middle. Then you adjust it by this little rotary drum here on the side. And you can see there's numbers on both sides. There's a three here and a seven there. You rotate it, you get a one and a six. Don't really know, that doesn't really quite work out, but uh, I do think that the bottom notch is for the lower. So say we're at uh, 300 yards right here or 300 meters probably, given it's China. Meanwhile, the left side is gonna correspond with the upper notch. So if you line that up with the uh, front post there, you'll be set for about 700 meters. That's my assumption. I will correct myself. In the description below, there's a correction section there. I will be talking with the distributor again. I talked to them once before doing this video. I will talk to them again to answer any other questions you guys might have in the first week or so of this video being up. Then I will update the description. The distributor, by the way, being Tactical Imports. So guys, jump into the comments below if you guys have any specific questions that you want me to ask Tactical Imports. I'll be chatting with Nick there again next week. Now, the furniture ahead of the site is different. It's it's similar to AK-47 traditional wood, but it's a little bit different, especially the top wood. Now, of course, this covers the piston assembly, but because it's a short stroke piston, this doesn't actually cover a tube. It's rather just a housing, very similar yet again to the VZ-58. Although this one has a much more simple disassembly method. There's just a cross pin, which you pop out, and then it's got the same little hooks that go underneath the ears on the gas block. It just pivots up and out, and there is your piston assembly and that's your short stroke system. Very similar to the Type 81, though the VZ-58 does not have an adjustable gas block, so it's a little simpler. But the disassembly process for this guy is kind of a bear. It's, it's a little more tedious and technical. You have to kind of get inside, do some weird stuff with here. I talk about this in the disassembly videos. So if you guys really want to see that, you can check it out there. And then forward from that, we have again the adjustable gas block. It's three positions, and it's adjusted, as I showed you, with the case head of a cartridge. So you just slip it in there and then you tilt it on back and tilt it on back once more. So there are three positions. We'll, uh, over here, there's the correspond on the gas block here with position one, zero, and on the other side, there's a two. One is for normal operating conditions. Basically the gun is maintained well. You're nothing crazy going on environmentally and you're just gonna be good to run it with, uh, again, normal ammunition. 
then there is a zero, which shuts off the gas, and that actually doesn't really have a, a point for the LMG. That's just a carryover from the standard Type 81 rifle, which is set up for rifle grenades, and the barrel has a bunch of gas rings on it. Basically, when you're doing a rifle grenade, you, in, you fire a blank instead, a high-pressure blank, so you turn off the gas, and then all that pressure just shoots out the grenade. In the case of the LMG, it essentially just turns it into a single-shot straight-pull rifle, which is actually kind of fun, and it still cycles very smoothly. Again, this was demonstrated in the shooting video, so you guys can check that out if you want to see that. Position number two is for adverse settings. So your gun is full of mud or crud or iced up or whatever, uh, really dirty, your ammunition is really, I don't know, or something's just not working right, and you basically you open up the gas port to get extra gas through the system to really uh, put all the pressure you can into running the, cycling the action. Overall, I really do like this gas block system. It almost looks like it might be vented at the front. It's something, something I'm gonna have to clarify with the distributor because uh, I just noticed that literally right now. Now the barrel is just over 20 inches. It's a thicker profile or heavier profile than the standard Type 81. That's to maintain you know, accuracy as the barrel heats up. Normally uh, you get a point of impact chipped. Again, as the metal heats up, it starts to twist and warp a bit. It'll start throwing your shots a bit more. So it's, that's actually a pretty common feature on light support weapons like LMGs. RPKs, things like that. And just to qualify, that doesn't necessarily make the barrel more accurate. It definitely makes it more stiff, which is good, but essentially it just helps you maintain the accuracy as you're shooting under rapid fire as it, where a normal thinner barrel would heat up faster and warp faster. And from there, we got the bipod, which is basically a pretty typical ordeal. You just uh, pinch and then you can rotate the mechanism that uh, spins out again, very, very, very similar to most things. It doesn't have a, you know, a, a full on retention system. It just kind of hangs there. Pretty typical of most RPKs. The one that is different from that, again, will be your Galil or your Valmet, which has a nice little spring steel clip retainer here, which is actually nice. I do actually like that. I also like the fact that on the Valmet, you've A, got some spiky feet, and B, your feet aren't gonna dig into your handguard like they can here. Um, same thing on the uh, EVZ-58. You get a little bit of an indent in there, which is quite normal from the feet just pushing into that wood. So. Again, fins just one-upping them Russians. If the Chinese had copied the fins, this thing would be even cooler. Finally, up front here, we've got a cleaning rod under the barrel, which again is very typical, very typical carryover of an SKS, or at least the uh, Chinese version of that. I wanna say Type 56, I could be wrong there. I'm just kinda thinking off the top of my head. And then the barrel itself actually has threads, which is kind of cool. Again, the, it was common on the AKs. They put the little slant brake on them. This makes use of a very similar system where there's a little detent up here. You push in the detent and then spin this guy off. And the thread pitch on here, for you guys that want to suppress your Type 81 LMG, well, good luck. It's M16 metric with a right-hand twist. So uh, maybe you can get something, something custom done up for you guys. With the adjustable gas block, it would be kind of interesting. Again, you can turn that gas off and it would cycle like a single shot straight pull. That would actually be pretty cool. That I might actually have to try going forward. If you guys know of any sweet cans that are already set up or some kind of uh, attachment method, go on and uh, drop that in the comments below. Guys, that pretty much does it for the features of the gun. We're gonna jump inside now, I'll take you through the unique, interesting aspects of the internals, and then we'll finish off talking a little bit about how this gun came to be, who made it, and uh, how it got here to Canada. And then I'll take you around a quick tour around the wall, and we'll probably call her a night at that point. So into the gun we go. All right, and here's the gun all broken down as seen in my disassembly video. We're gonna take a moment to go through a couple of the unique features that differentiate this from a traditional AK pattern, namely that short stroke operating system and the adjustable gas block here. So we're gonna go through that. Uh, basically, I'll start off with showing you guys the bolt. Here's, uh, it's scalloped. Otherwise, it's very similar to traditional AK bolt. Here's the carrier. Again, just note the different charging handle, but otherwise, the main difference is gonna be the fact that there's no piston connected to this. Typically. An AK-47 carrier looks more like, you know, more like that with the piston connected directly to it. So this is a bit of a departure there. Again, with that short stroke, you can even see where the piston impacts the carrier. So I'll throw that guys together here in the receiver and I'll demonstrate this function. Get our carrier in there, get our piston in as well. All right, so when, again, your bullet travels down the barrel, gets to this point here, the gas block bleeds off some of that gas, that gas regulated by this three position regulator and allows those gases to connect with the piston, which pushes it back. Now that is the entirety of the stroke of this thing. It's about, no, about an inch or so. So if, if you're really giving it, that's what's gonna happen. 
That's gonna impart enough energy to cycle this thing all the way back, eject your round, strip a new one, and chamber it, caulking the action at the same time, and then you're ready to go once again. So now let's look at that regulator. So again, it's a three position regulator, as denoted by the gas block itself. We have a one, a zero, and a two. Those correspond with these three holes right down here. The small hole, <laughs> this no hole, and then a large hole. So the way this works is when you have it on position number one, which is intended for normal firing conditions, that's gonna impart enough gas to cycle the action, again, under normal circumstances. Zero, this thing is gonna function like a straight pull bolt action gun. The gas is completely cut off. There's no gas being available to cycle the action. It's gonna run a lot more clean because everything's gonna run out the front of the gun. Then position two is gonna be for adverse conditions. Maybe the gun is really dirty, maybe it's clogged up with something, and that bigger hole is gonna allow for more gas relative to position one. Well, that extra gas is gonna impart additional energy to the piston, which is gonna then in turn impart additional energy to the carrier, which is gonna help cycle it under even more adverse conditions. Now under normal conditions, as I tested in my shooting video, that translated into a little bit harsher felt recoil. Hey guys, here's a quick shot of the piston system as an assembly. That's as far as its travel goes there. And that's as far as it extends into the action. Alrighty, gents. So, pretty interesting stuff. Anyways, this gun wasn't really supposed to be, at least this current commercial batch of them. Now, the Tactical Imports, the distributor in Canada that was bringing in the Type 81s over the last couple of years, they wanted to do the LMG from day one, although they were told they couldn't, until recently. A couple of the state factories or the firearm factories in China kind of collaborated and made this thing a possibility. So, you guys, a lot of you guys, at least that are Chinese firearm buffs, are going to be familiar with Narinko and Polytech. So guys, those actually are not manufacturers. Those guys are exporters. The actual manufacturers are just like numbered state factories that, that produce these things for the Chinese government and other foreign contracts, I suppose. And Type, I believe, 296 is the, or is the company that did most of the Type 81s that previously came to Canada. Factory 356 teamed up to get the LMG done. And uh, of note, these apparently are produced to a higher uh, spec than the Type 81s that previously came into Canada. They are a little more expensive, but again, from what I've heard, they are done, yeah, more quality control, a little bit higher quality. From what I've heard, the people that have gotten them have definitely been very happy with them. And from what I've heard to date, they have been incredibly reliable guns with, uh, actually, the reason I got this one was because the distributor released their holdback on, on guns that were set aside for warranty because all the guns that went out and there were no problems to date. They do also have another batch coming in just prior to Christmas, so there's that, but I guess they weren't too worried about it. But uh, again, it's pretty neat, pretty neat. And I'm definitely glad that I was able to snag one of these last few here. So gents, that's gonna do it on the Type 81 LMG. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit me up down below. If you have any questions you want me to ask uh, Nick over at Tactical Imports, over the next week because I will uh, tally those up and just add them to the specs and maybe the correction section below if I mess something up. I do also wanna try and get the twist rate of the barrel because I forgot to ask them that originally. So again, let me know on that and I will uh, add those below. Otherwise, let's go through the wall. I'm gonna kick things off with this gorgeous Agent 2 1911 from Nighthawk Customs. This thing is the smoothest 1911 I've ever handled. And I've handled a few nice 1911s. So Nighthawk does these, um, they're on loan to me. This is actually a buddy's gun at 9mm guy. Go check him out. He's a solid dude, long distance shooter, and he's pretty into the uh, Gucci pistols. As part owner of Black Box Customs, he uh, was gracious enough to include his gun when they sent some other ones to me. So I'm gonna be doing a full video series on this as well. We'll do a breakdown, we'll do some shooting, because this thing is super slick. Look at this trigger pull. Oof. She's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, you guys all love the AWM. That is the AWSM actually, the 338 Lapua Magnum gun. We're gonna have some more videos of that thing coming up pretty soon as well. Topped off with the ZCO 527 Optic, which is just super awesome. Got their new Impact 3 reticle, and guys, this action. This action is so silky smooth. I just wanna die every time I run it. It is so bloody nice. Down from there, we have the always awful detachable carry handle this thing oh i just basically have this here so i control richard the real deal movie arms check him out on here on instagram solid dude he does help me out a lot he's, he's a crazy collector he's got an awesome business in canada and he's going to be sending me some toys to uh 
Again, get out information for you guys on those cool guns on the on the channel here. He's got tons of rare stuff, tons of really cool stuff. Need I say MP7s? He's got like 10 of them. And I'm going to get a couple here to play with for you guys soon. So stay tuned for that and give him some love again on IG. Down from that, we have the uh, Mare's Leg, the Takedown Edition. This is Kiapa. This is, oh, this is the best flip cocker around. Super cool. Again, 44 man. This thing is an awesome camping gun. Next to that, we have the Lottie, which is always just a hottie hiding in the corner. 20 mil anti-tank gun. I got to get that thing out here again as well. Maybe sometime this winter because it does have a pair of skis. Definitely could have some fun running that guy. Um, down below, I already talked about the MG34, so we'll bypass that boy. But last and not least, we have the Serbu Super Shorty that has uh, gained a few inches here. Uh, my buddy Simon at SJ Hardware did just all the awesome things with this thing. Mark 14 stock, courtesy of Tier 1 Armory. A bunch of other slick stuff on here, and I'll be doing some content specifically on this thing soon so stay tuned for that anyways guys thanks a ton i'll catch you all next time here's an up nine for your uh hateful pleasure you guys always rag on me for the nine mil this gun honestly guys this thing is a good time i don't know why you guys don't like the nine because this thing is a beaut to shoot i do have a full video series on this thing as well go check that out i got this cool retro grip here from a custom smith manufacturing it's a good time. But again, uh, if you like my content, I got five things for you. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram as well at arm.n.gun. I do post daily lots of cool pictures of cool guns. We do the whole arm and gun thing. That's kind of what the channel is about. Also, my name is literally Armand. Quick little spoiler for you guys that have stuck with me to the end. And uh, we do stories basically every day and at least a couple times a week, I do some cool stuff out of the armory here. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave you there. Thanks a ton, guys. Catch you in the next one. Arm and gun, out.